As we prepare our hearts and our minds for worship this morning, we're so glad to be certainly in the house of God on this Family and Friends Day. So those that are coming in, if you would come in and you can please have a seat as we begin our service this morning. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. I'm going to ask Pastor Curran to come, and he's going to open us up with our call to worship and invocation, and then we'll move forward in our praise and worship. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And if you're glad to be in his house again, we ought to say thank you. Thank you. Amen. So as we go higher into God, let us go to God in prayer. Our God and our Father, we love you and we thank you. We praise your holy name. Lord, we do not take it for granted all the things that you've done for us thus far. And your name gets the glory, honor, and praise. Lord, we ask, God, before we start the service, that you come in, rest, rule, and abide in this place. Shift the atmosphere, oh God. Lord, come in like a mighty rushing flood and penetrate our hearts with your divine spirit and your power. Lord, bless the choir on today. Lord, bless everyone in the service. Bless the man of God who is going to give us your word. So we thank you and we love you in Jesus' great name that we do pray. Amen. Amen. And now we will have two selections by our choir. Bless the Lord with me and praise is what I do. Come to praise the Lord this morning. So let's put our hands together. If you feel like standing, you can stand. But we want to worship God. Come on and praise the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless. Come on and bless the Lord, bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and give him the highest praise. Hallelujah. Come on and clap those hands, clap those hands. Oh, clap your hands with me. Clap your hands with me. Clap your hands, clap your hands with me. Give him the highest praise. Hallelujah. Give him the highest praise. Come on and dance, come on and dance before the Lord. Come on and dance before the Lord. Come on and dance before the Lord. Give him the highest praise. Oh, 
Come on and clap to laugh your hands. Come on and clap your hands. want to be in your presence and we want to say thank you. Praise is what I do when I want to be close to you I'll bless him all time praise is who I am I will praise him while I can I'll bless him all times, and I vow to praise you through the good and the
Come on, church. Thank you, Jesus. Praise 
Our morning prayer will be led by Candace Holman, who should come at this time to pray for us. Dear God, everywhere we walk, let it be on your path. Everything we see, let it be through your eyes. Everything we do, let it be in your will. Every hardship we face, let us praise it in your hands. Every emotion we feel, let it be your spirit moving through us. Everything we seek, let us find it in your love. My dear God, I thank you for this day. I ask to not know where we are going, but only to know and feel in the depths of our heart and soul that you are with us. You are guiding us, and we are safe. In Jesus' name, I offer myself to you. Amen. Greetings, St. Timothy Church family, Pastor Jackson, Pastor Kern, Reverend Murphy. Happy Family and Friends Sunday. The announcements for the morning are as follows. James 5.16, therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayers of a righteous man is powerful and effective. Join us on Wednesday at noon by dialing 712-432-8399 and enter passcode 795-209. Motivated for Jesus Christ, K-12 through Community Youth, join us in person or on Zoom, St. Timothy Community Church Youth Church, 1130 a.m., November 14th. Earn a participation gift for Christmas, Amazon or Walmart gift card, $25 one session, $30 two sessions, $35 three session, and $45 four sessions. Continue prayers for our beloved members who are ill and or recovering from surgery, Janice Austin, Phyllis Drayton, Florida Joyner, Dolores Phillips, Wilson Pierce to be added to the sick and shut-in list and for pastor to know who is sick and shut-in please contact the office thank you for your financial support to st. Timothy and our associated ministries we encourage you to continue giving through our website by clicking the donate button or you can download and use the Zelle app by using our church email address st. Timothy at hotmail.com also, you can utilize the U.S. mail or church's mail slot. Please know that contributions of any amount are always welcomed and very much appreciated. Need transportation to and from church? Please contact Brother David Bullock 24 hours in advance at 219-718-2434 to schedule a pickup. In loving memory, the beautiful flowers on the altar are in loving memory of Clara A. Thompson, mother of Dr. Brenda Thompson, and her friend Anna Catherine Thornton, mother of Victor Thornton. Clara A. Thompson would have celebrated her 100th birthday on October 30th. A generous donation was given in her memory. Congratulations. Congratulations to attorney Candace J. Smith. This past week, she was sworn in as president of the National Black Prosecutors Association Chicago chapter. the daughter of Mr. and Dr. Gregory and Karen Jones, the wife of Joseph Smith, church percussionist, and mother of A.J., Carrington, and Grayson. Amen. 
We are so proud of her accomplishments. To God be all the glory. For more than 30 years, October has been recognized as Breast Cancer Awareness Month with the goal of increasing awareness and raising funds to support research. St. Timothy, for the month of October, our missionary offering will go towards breast cancer research and St. Jude Children's Cancer Hospital. To date, we have raised $1,521. Please support Pastor Jackson. Please listen to the following additional church announcements. To church family, even though you didn't have to do it, you did it anyway, and it was much appreciated. Your act of kindness was such a wonderful surprise. May I continue to be blessed with such a loving and caring church family, Miss Josephine Good. Special thanks to St. Timothy Church and the missionary group. Parents, please give or email your child's report card by the second Sunday in November to Pastor Curran. You can reach him by email at revcurran at stTimothychurch.org. And that concludes the announcements for the morning. At this time, we would like to recognize our visitors. We are pleased that you chose St. Timothy as your place of worship today. It is our sincere hope that you would come and visit with us again. Visitors, as your names are called, please remain standing until all visitors have been recognized. Jimmy Trutland from Gary, Indiana. Marie Atkins. Nimrob Atkins. Ron Patton from Frankfort, Illinois, and he is the guest of George Comer and member of New Faith Baptist Church in Matson, Illinois. Kimberly Turner. Jacina Turner. Lily Turner. Regina Gaston. Ada Thomas from Maryville, Indiana. She is the guest of George and Catherine Bradley and a member of Clark Road Missionary Baptist Church here in Gary. Yeah. Shirley Stanford from Gary and she is the guest of Jerry Stamps and a member of Pilgrim Missionary Baptist Church here in Gary. Yeah. Valerie Tinion. Adam Tinion, Stephanie Parr, Curtis Sanders, he is the guest of Herbert Dunaway and Kiara Eskew, Claudia Wells, Mary and, is that Earl Powell? And Tammy Nowlin, she is from Hobart, Indiana, and she is the guest of Gerald and Sean Bernard. Amen. If there are any additional visitors, will you please stand and be recognized at this time? I'm going to start on my right. If I did not call your name and you are visiting, will you please give us your name and where are you from? He's going to give you a microphone. Belinda Turner from Gary, Indiana. Good morning, family. I'm Sandra Comer, a guest of everybody. <laughs> Regina Gaston, New Mount Moriah Baptist Church, friend of Patricia Johnson. Um, 
I'm Sharetta Riley. I'm the guest of Lucille Riley and Sharon Hayne. And I have with me today Lariah Powell. I have Lamisha Foley. Stand up and talk. <laughs> And our land is Robinson, and we're visiting from St. John Baptist Church. Claudia Wells, a former member, but still considered home. Amen. Ada Thomas, um, from Clog Road Baptist Church, and I'm a guest of Catherine and George Bradley. Erlene Rogers, I'm a Gary, Indiana resident, and I'm here with my sister-in-law, Melvina Smith. Yeah. Hello, I'm Fanny Hoskin. I'm a member of Tree of Life Missionary Baptist Church, and I'm here with my sister, Cora Hoskins. Yeah. Hello, Deborah Boyd, a member of Tree of Life Missionary Baptist Church and guests of H Cora Hoskins. Amen. Ezekiel Barber, guest of George Coma. Amen. Anyone else that haven't, uh, we haven't recognized yet? We want to make sure we recognize everyone that is visiting with us. Priscilla Somerville, a uh, member of First Baptist Church here. Guests of Corinthia Bullock. Okay, wonderful. Okay, did we catch everyone that did not, uh, we didn't recognize? Okay, go ahead. Billie Jean and Dave Coleman, and we are from St. John, Indiana, and we're the guests of Ernestine Robinson, uh, Wallace and Mitty Hudson, and Patricia Johnson. Okay. Good morning, Freddie Rayon from Flossmore, Illinois, and I'm a guest of my sister, Ernestine Robinson. Okay, wonderful. Good morning, I'm Charlene Johnson, former member of St. Timothy Baptist Church, and um, guest of, and re-invited by uh, Corinthian David Bullock. Okay, wonderful. Good morning. I'm Peggy Harris, and I'm from First Baptist Church, and I'm a guest of Charlotte Horton. Welcome to all of our visitors, and again, thank you for worshiping with us today. And now, Pastor Jackson. We welcome, we welcome you. We welcome you. We welcome. Glad you came. Each and every one be welcome. We welcome, we welcome you to praise the Lord. We love you. We love you. We love you.
We pray that you have felt welcome and the warmth as you've come into the house of the Lord. As we are uh, sitting uh, uh, near a proximity to one another, let's just wave at each other and just say welcome. God loves you and so do I. Let folks feel the love of Christ through you. Amen. We welcome those that are viewing our broadcast online through our website and certainly those on our Facebook pages and those who are listening on our conference call, our prayer line, we welcome you as well. Those on our Facebook pages, we ask that you would share your Facebook video uh, page so that others may uh, be able to tune in uh, to hear word and be a part of our worship this morning. We welcome each and every one. Our special welcome will, is also for Reverend Dr. Shelton Murphy. Uh, he's a friend of mine and a brother, a pastor uh, from Norfolk, Virginia. Uh, we've served together on uh, the Virginia Baptist State Convention and also the Tidewater Peninsula uh, Baptist Association and also the Pastors Coalition, and the list goes on. Uh, his church is uh, the Mount Gilead Missionary Baptist Church, and, which is located 10 about 10 to 15 minutes from the church I, I used to pastor before coming here to St. Timothy. And it's always good to be able to stay in contact with friends, amen. And, and those you can actually call brother. And so he comes with a, uh, uh, a, a list of gifts uh, and, and, and that he shared those gifts with us this week through our revival. We had a wonderful revival this week. Each preacher uh, really came and uh, really demonstrated their knowledge of the Word of God, and uh, the delivery was wonderful. We had just a wonderful time each and every night, uh, and so we thank God for uh, those uh, preachers. We thank God for the, um, the workshops uh, that we're able to be a part of, and thank you, St. Timothy members. We had community folks that also uh, were involved that came on the Friday and Saturday. Um, when we had the financial literacy workshops dealing with church finance, investments, and our youth had their own uh, workshops dealing with finance, and then we had a workshop on entrepreneurship, and all of that was received well. And, uh, and if you've been blessed by that and you are part of that, just go ahead and clap your hands and thank God for the experience. But I do want to uh, give special thanks to our choir um, and our um, ushers for being here, uh, the uh, media ministry uh, for being here, um, the folks who put together the program, uh, so Rosie Washington and her son Reggie Washington, uh, who put together the program, Brother Melvin, who printed uh, the programs, uh, Linda Miles, who really coordinated the uh, COVID pre-screening team, and those that are a part of that screening team, thank you so much uh, for dedicating your time. Uh, Brother Larry and Cynthia Pruitt, with the uh, l, l Catering and the whole staff and volunteers who help to serve um, the food and the breakfast uh, each day. We will certainly thank you for that. Uh, certainly to our, our security team ministry uh, and who helped with uh, making sure things were running smoothly and making sure we were protected. Amen. Yeah. Uh, we want to thank God for our trustee board ministry leaders who participated, uh, Joanne Atkins, Gregory Jones, uh, Jean Johnson, Mary James, Iris Pace, uh, Jamia Steele, uh, Victor Thornton. Uh, we thank them for being here, being a part of that experience. And then to our youth pastor, Pastor Curran, uh, who coordinated the Friday night uh, youth experience uh, for Youth Revival. Let's give him a hand. And so we took everything and all different parts and everyone coming together to be a part of that. Certainly to our sponsors, uh, which was Centers of Congregation. Uh, I told you that we wrote a grant. Uh, I wrote a grant for the uh, financial literacy piece um, and also the Urban League for uh, being a part of that um, sponsorship as well that helped us to uh, coordinate uh, the financial literacy for our church and for the community at large. So we certainly thank you uh, for our sponsors. Uh, we want to uh, make mention of uh, today, uh, is, we know it's Family and Friends Day, but at 5 o'clock, we have the Hallelujah uh, Night, or the, the Trunk or Treat. And uh, so we, Pastor Curran is asking for all those who are involved in the Trunk or Treat uh, to meet him after service in the multi-purpose room so that he, he can give further instructions on what's going to happen later uh, this afternoon. 
We thank you for all the candies and the treats that came in. Um, I was looking for my favorite candy, and I saw it, a Snickers. And uh, it took self-control to contain myself. I said, Pastor Jackson, this is for the children. Amen. But we thank God for all of you who have participated in bringing, making sure the candy is provided uh, for the youth ministry so they can uh, have their function on their event this afternoon at 5 o'clock. I want to make mention that our Living at the Loss session, we know it's every first Thursday, so those who are still suffering over a loss, uh, someone that you have lost dear to your heart, uh, we do have an um, a, a opportunity for folks to be able to uh, tune in through our prayer line, conference line, which is 712-432-8399, and your enter code 795-209. If you need that information, you can always contact the church. It's in your bulletin as well. Uh, this week we'll be talking about uh, hope and what, what does hope look like. And so if you want to tune into that Bible study and session on Thursday at 6 o'clock, um, you can do so. That's all I have uh, for us this morning. Uh, we're going to move forward in our worship ex experience. And, um, and we're just so glad. I don't know about you. I woke up this morning. I was just so excited. And I got so excited, I forgot I had to wear my St. Timothy wear this morning. <laughs> and I, I knew I didn't have to preach because my brother here was going to come and preach this morning. Usually I do preach uh, Family and Friends Day, but since he was here, I said, well, since you're here, you might as well give us a word. Amen. And, uh, and so we're looking forward to the word of God. Uh, but I do have my mask. I said St. Timothy on it, so I think I'm okay. Amen. Don't crucify me, y'all. All right. All right, we'll move forward in our worship experience. Our children's choir is going to come, and then the children and the youth choir is going to come as well. We thank God that we're able to uh, restore our youth choir. Amen. 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 And so if there's any young person that's out there today, if you want to, be, uh, want to sing, it doesn't matter. You don't have to be a member of St. Timothy Community Church as a young person youngster to be a part of the ministries of the church. We invite all uh, to be a part of the choir. Uh, we have scouting and we have uh, the dance ministry, angelic praise, um, and we have um, a whole lot of different activities that are going on throughout the week here, and you can be a part of it. Our ushers, we have our youth ushers, and so forth. So you are part of that. You don't have to be a member, um, and, uh, and we encourage you to do so. Uh, so our children's choir is going to come, and then the children's choir and the youth choir will sing together. Then after they're finished, uh, our youth pastor, Pastor Curran, is going to then um, have the youth church. So all the young people that are here uh, this morning, uh, you can follow him uh, to the back, and he will, um, he will be the leader, and, and you will all go into the multi-purpose room to have your church uh, this morning.
Amen. Wonderful, wonderful. If we have any young people that are in the uh, congregation, you can, you can uh, follow the youth pastor out. He'll meet you in the back. And all of our youth uh, will gather with him in the back. Amen. And parents, after service is over, we don't want to keep your children overnight. <laughs> but you can certainly um, grab a hold of them on the way out. <laughs> Amen. <clears throat> Scripture um, tells us to be a cheerful giver. Apostle Paul reminds the church of Corinth in their giving. And at this time, those that came in person, there was an opportunity for you to give as you came into the sanctuary. We want to create an opportunity for those who are viewing and those that may be on our conference call line as well, that whatever the Lord has put on your heart, you would give today, or you can mail it to us as well. Those that are on, the, on our website, uh, you can certainly hit the donate button and go to the, uh, the giving section there and you can uh, put your, uh, your, your gift, your offering online. Uh, we will certainly receive it and we thank you certainly for it. If you have a Zelle app uh, or if you don't, you can download that to your cell phone, Zelle, and use the church's email address, which is sttimothy at hotmail.com. And we uh, thank you for your giving. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for who you are in our lives. We thank you, O oh Lord, because you have been so gracious and good to each and every one of us. And therefore, God, what you have blessed us with, we in return take a portion and we bless it and we give it back unto you. Good measure pressed down, shaken together, running over. God, we say thank you. We ask the Lord that you would just give back unto your people everything that they may need. It may not always be monetary, but God, just to have peace of mind, we thank you for it. Just to have, oh God, strength for the journey, we thank you for it. We thank you, oh God, for healing in the mighty name of Jesus. And so God, whatever you give unto us, we say thank you for it. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, and the people of God say together, amen. Our Grace Dance Ministry uh, is going to come at this time and it's going to grace us with a selection and dance as they come. And follow them, we'll have an introduction of our guest preacher and Sister Diane Pratt is going to come at that time and uh, give us a formal introduction of our guest minister this morning. Followed by that, we'll have the choir to give us a selection and then the next voice you will hear is that of the Reverend Dr. Shelton Murphy. Good morning. Good morning. Giving all honor and all praise to God, to Pastor Jackson, Pastor Curran, Reverend Murphy, ministers and leaders, and to all of God's children who are gathered in this place, we would like to take this opportunity to read into your hearing 2 Corinthians 5, 1 through 5, the New International Version, and Revelations 21.4, King James Version, 2 Corinthians 5, 1 through 5. Now we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. Meanwhile, we groan, longing to be clothed, with our heavenly dwelling, because when we are clothed, we will not be found naked. For while we are in this tent, we groan and are burdened, because we do not wish to be unclothed, but clothed with our heavenly dwelling, 
So that is what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. Now it is God who has made us for this very purpose and has given us the spirit as a deposit guaranteeing what is to come. Rev Revelation 21 and 4. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away. I have read into your hearing, 2 Corinthians 5, 1 through 5, and Revelations 21 and 4. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his holy word. In Jesus' name, amen. This morning, the Grace Praise Dance Ministry has prepared by God's grace and guidance a message by way of word and dance, a message to soothe the soul, comfort the heart, and gladden the spirit. Now come, join us as we take a trip back in time to a typical black church Sunday service. The church ladies are now entering.
moving a little closer to home. When you see me praising the Lord, y'all, I'm just moving closer to my heavenly home. It is my distinct pleasure, first of all, good morning, church family and friends, to introduce our distinguished guest minister for this morning, Reverend Dr. Shelton Murphy. Dr. Shelton Murphy was born in Smithfield, North Carolina, to the late Sam and Louise Murphy. Dr. Murphy married Doris Annette James. They have been married for 40 years. From this union, God blessed them with one son, Shelton Josiah Murphy, a graduate of Howard University, HU, you know, in Washington, D.C. Dr. Murphy attended North Carolina State University in Raleigh, North Carolina, where he earned a BA degree in communications. His Master of Divinity was earned in December of 1986 and the Doctorate of Ministry in December of 1990, both from Southeastern Baptist Theological Seminary in Wake Forest, North Carolina. In December 2013, he completed a Master of Science degree in Church Administration and Management from Villanova University in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and he is currently pursuing a master's in pastoral counseling, graduating in May 2020. He is also a first-year law student at Regent University. Dr. Murphy, a former campus pastor, state and federal prison chaplain, hospital chaplain, rehabilitation counselor, and Navy chaplain, now serves as the beloved and celebrated pastor of Mount Gilead Missionary Baptist Church in Norfolk, Virginia. Because of the favor of our great God and the great vision of making disciples, in 2004, Mount Gilead took on the challenge of building a new $2.9 million family life center. Sounds familiar. And although the Family Life Center was under a 30-year mortgage by the grace of God and the faithful giving of God's people, Mount Gilead was empowered to pay it off in 11 years. In August of 2015, the Family Life Center was paid in full. It's only been 20 years since Dr. Murphy has taken the reign of leadership but by the grace of God, Mount Gilead has taken off and is growing in quality and quantity. Dr. Murphy can be seen on Sundays at 10 a.m. on Facebook Live and YouTube. Just look for Mount Gilead Missionary Baptist Church, Norfolk, Virginia. Dr. Murphy is grateful to be here today to share the precious word of God with the precious people of God pray for and with him as he stands to declare unto us what thus saith the Lord for such a time as this. To God be the glory. The next speaking voice you hear will be that of Reverend Dr. Shelton Murphy.
Praise the Lord, everybody. I'm going to try you again. Praise the Lord, everybody. If you've got two hands, would you just put those hands together and give God a praise in this place? The Bible says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. If you're breathing, baby, you qualify. Come on and give him glory in this place. Hallelujah. 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 What a mighty God we serve. Amen, amen. I greet you this morning in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and I bring you holy greetings from Mount Gilead, Missionary Baptist Church, Norfolk, Virginia. I am just happy and tickled, black and pink and red and all that good stuff, to be in Gary, Indiana, a place I've never been before. But I got to see Michael Jackson's house. <laughs> I got a story to tell. Amen, somebody. <laughs> but nevertheless, I am just so glad to be here today. And um, I just want to say to Pastor Jackson, would you first of all, help me celebrate your amazing and phenomenal pastor, Dr. Ramin Jackson. <laughs> Amen, my brother and my friend. Oh, come on, this is your pastor. This is your gift. We can do better than that. Amen, amen. <laughs> to God be the glory. It's no secret how much I love my brother, and um, uh, we are, we're friends uh, for, been, for a while, but um, St. Timothy, I want you to know um, that um, um, you have won a very special place in my heart because of the way you have embraced and loved my brother. Thank you for accepting him, embracing him, affirming him, encouraging him, and just loving him. I mean, he's just beaming with Jesus joy to be the pastor of St. Timothy Community Church. <laughs> Amen, somebody. And so we're glad about it. I also want to say thank you so much for your hospitality. I mean, talk about rolling out the red carpet. Good God Almighty. <laughs> you did it for a brother this week, and I appreciate all of your kindness, your love, your kind words, your words of encouragement. It's just been a wonderful experience to be here uh, from Thursday until now. And um, I was, I'm always, when I go places, I have to look around and see what I can steal. I think I'll take the choir. I think I'll take this, these two mus musicians. And where are those kids that I'll take them to? Amen, somebody. <laughs> but it's been just wonderful. You guys are amazing. Amen, you are amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Well, I was gonna sing, but if you got here late, you missed it. I've already done it, Dr. Matt. We good? We good, all right, let's preach, amen. If you are able, if you are able, would you stand with me for the reading of the word? Um, we're going to come from uh, Joshua chapter 2. There's a family and friends message in Joshua chapter 2 that perhaps you have not noticed before. And um, then we have two very, very short scriptures, which is, um, affirms Joshua, which is Hebrews 11, 30 through 31, and then James 2, 24 through 26. But let's go to Joshua chapter 2. Let's see here. Get this computer to do right. All right. Joshua chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. It reads thusly. There's a very powerful story here, so I want you to hear the story, and that way I won't be reading it over and over when I'm getting to the text. Now, Joshua, the son of Nun, sent out two men from Acacia Grove to spy secretly saying, go view the land, especially Jericho. So they went and came to the house of a harlot named Rahab and lodged there. And it was told the king of Jericho saying, behold, men have come here tonight from the children of Israel to search out the country. So the king of Jericho sent to Rahab saying, bring out the men who have come to you, who have entered your house for they have come to search out all the country. Then the woman took the two men and hid them. So she said, yes, the men came to me, but I did not know where they were from. And it happened as the gate was being shut, when it was dark, that the men went out. Where the men went, uh, I do not know. Perhaps uh, pursue them quickly, for you may overtake them. But she had brought them up to the roof 
and hidden them with the stalks of flax, which she had laid in order on the roof. Then the men pursued them by the road to the Jordan to the forest. And as soon as those who pursued them had gone out, they shut the gate. Now, before they lay down, she came up to them on the roof and said to the men, I know that the Lord has given you the land, that the terror of you has fallen on us, and that all the inhabitants of the land are faint-hearted because of you. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt, and what you did to the two kings of the Amorites who were on the other side of the Jordan, Sion and Og, whom you utterly destroyed. And as soon as we heard these things, our hearts melted. Neither did there remain any more courage in anyone because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and on earth beneath. Now, therefore, I beg you, swear to me by the Lord, since I have shown you kindness, that you also will show kindness to my father's house and give me a true token and spare my father, my mother, my brothers, my sisters, and all that they have and deliver our lives from death. So the man answered her, our lives for yours. If none of you tell this business of ours, and it shall be when the Lord has given us the land, that we will deal kindly and truly with you. Then she let them down by a rope through the window, for her house was on the city wall. She dwelt on the wall, and she said to them, get to the mountain, lest the pursuers meet you. Hide there three days until the pursuers have returned. Afterward, you may go on your way. So the men said to her, we will be blameless of this oath of yours, which you have made us swear, unless when we come into the land, you bind this line of scarlet cord in the window through which you let us down. And unless you bring your father, watch this, unless you bring your father, your mother, your brothers, and all your father's household to your own home, so it shall be that whoever goes outside the doors of your house into the street, his blood shall be on his own head, and we will be guiltless. And whoever is with you in the house, my God, his blood shall be on our heads if a hand is laid on him. And if you tell this business of ours, then we will be free from your oath which you made us swear. Then she said, according to your word, so, it, so be it. And she went sent them away and they departed and she bound the scarlet cord in the window they departed and went to the mountains and stayed there three days until the pursuers returned the pursuers sought them all along the way but did not find them so the two men returned descended from the mountain and crossed over and they came to the Jordan the son of Nun and told him all that had befallen them and they said to Joshua truly the Lord has delivered all the land into our hands for indeed all the inhabitants of the country are faint hearted because of us thus ended the reading of Joshua Hebrews 11 30 and 31 by faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they had been compassed about for seven days. By faith, Rahab the harlot right. perished not with them that were disobedient, having received the spies with peace. And then James chapter 2, 24 and 26. You see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way? For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. Before you take your seats, I want you to holler back at the preacher and say, A split second decision. A split second decision. I think you got it. You may have a seat. Let's pray. Father, in the precious name of Jesus. Lord God Almighty, we thank you for the blessing and beauty of this another day. We thank you, Father God, for your great goodness to all of us, for your great mercies and your great measures of grace. Lord, thank you for last night's rest in peace and safety and comfort and this morning's awakening in the same. We realize, oh God, that there are so many who are yet struggling in, on this global village, namely the people of Haiti, the people of Afghanistan, 
So many people, oh God, who have gone through so many terrible tragedies, we take it not lightly that you've been kind to us and you've allowed the weather to be kind to us. We thank you for the fire that did not happen to burn our houses down. We thank you for the tornado that did not come our way. God, we thank you for the hurricane that passed us by. Lord, we could go on and on and on just giving you glory, honor, and praise for your great goodness to us. So we want you to know that we're grateful today for all that you do to favor our lives. And now that it's time to hear a word from you, Lord, we pray that you would once again think through my mind and speak life through these lips of clay so that these thy precious people who have chosen to gather in this holy place might be blessed, enriched, encouraged, empowered, equipped to run on and be what you've called us to be for such a time as this. We ask it in Jesus' name and in advance, God, we give you praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, we pray and give thanks. Let every heart that agrees say, Amen. Amen. A split second decision. St. Timothy, as we come to celebrate the great goodness of our God on this beautiful family and friends day, Pastor Jackson, I'd like to begin this message by asking a simple question. And that question is Have you ever had to make a fast, quick, split second decision? In a moment when it seemed that you did not have time to really think about the consequences because the decision had to be made in a split second. Sure you have. Just imagine with me for a moment that you're driving to the grocery store. And just as you are approaching a busy intersection, the traffic light turns yellow. You are close enough to make it, so you think. Uh-huh. But what decision will you make in the next split second? Yes, will you hit the accelerator hard and barrel on through quickly as the light goes from yellow to red? Or will you just as quickly hit the brakes, slow the car to a stop, and take no chances? Well, certainly the decision that you make in that instance will depend on a few factors. One, your schedule for that day. Whether you are, not, whether you are in a hurry or not, running behind schedule, or are you free to simply take your time? Another factor is how you generally feel about obeying the traffic laws, possibly getting a ticket and then having to hear these words, your license and registration, please. Anybody ever heard that? <laughs> but once that decision has been made, Pastor, unknown to us, there may be other split-second decisions lying ahead. What do you mean, Pastor Murphy? Well, let's assume we made it safely through the intersection. And by this time, we've completed our grocery shopping, and we're at the checkout counter. And the cashier unknowingly gives you a $10 bill in the change instead of a $1 bill. In that very moment, Pastor, what decision will you make in the next split second? Will you return the money instantly because you know she made a mistake? Or will you walk off with the extra money that you know isn't yours and say, the Lord moves in mysterious ways, his wonders to perform. Hello, somebody. Once again, our decision in that split second will largely depend on a few factors. We may remember times when we have purchased items from that same store and the food item has spoiled and the store manager refused to take it back for an even exchange. And, our, our, and despite our feelings about the store, our sense of honesty, integrity, righteousness, and justice just might kick in and we will quickly call the cashier's attention to the mistake. Whatever our response, what we believe about the store, Dr. Mack, our honesty and personal integrity will determine just what will we do in that split second making decision moment. Beloved, be sure today that this is not a new problem. People have been faced, uh, have been faced with such split-second decision moments like these and others for thousands and thousands of years. Even as far back to the Garden of Eden, when Adam and, and, and that bad girl named Eve, y'all know her, made a decision to eat or not to eat. That has caused mankind to live under the curse of sin all our days. But uh, St. Timothy, whether we know it or not, such decisions are often based on what we believe about ourselves, what we believe about our world, and what we believe about our God. 
And because we believe in God, the real question is just how does what we believe impact our lives and the manner in which we live every day? Well, as we come quickly to our text for uh, this morning, we, this afternoon, we find a bad girl by the name of Rahab who was put on the spot and had to make a split second decision. And in that decision, her life, the life of her family, there it is, and her future hung in the balance. It's an interesting story. And if you've got just a few minutes, I'd love to share it with you. You see, beloved Rahab was a citizen of a great walled and fortified city by the name of Jericho. And in this city, Rahab, for whatever reason, had chosen to practice one of the oldest professions known to man, prostitution. And as a result of such a practice, it is evident that she had already made some decisions about the worth of her body, the worth of her reputation, the worth of her life, and even the worth of her soul. But today, St. Timothy, as we come to Joshua chapter 2, we meet Rahab as she is faced with making this monumental split-second decision. And so, Pastor, to better understand that decision, we simply need to turn the pages of time back about 40 years from Joshua 2 to set the stage for Rahab's situation. You see, 40 years earlier, Israel, the people of God, were held captive as slaves in the land of Egypt. But after 430 years of captivity, God, under the leadership of his servant Moses, delivered his people with a mighty rod and outstretched hand. They served, uh, excuse me, they survived the 10 plagues of Egypt. And God miraculously made a sidewalk in the middle of the Red Sea and brought them through on a dry land. Anybody remember that? After coming through the Red Sea, they traveled in the wilderness and enjoyed heavenly manna, tasty quail, and cool water from the rock in the wilderness. But through unbelief and fear, they were unable to enter into Canaan, the promised land. And as a result, they wandered for 40 years in the Sinai Desert. And during such an, a time, an entire generation died off under Moses' leadership. But St. Timothy, today our scene opens with Moses having already died, and the 12 tribes are now camped on the east side of the Jordan River, ready to begin their conquest of Canaan under the new leadership of Joshua, their commander-in-chief. So, our story begins in Joshua 2.1. Beloved, this is the setting the Israelites are preparing and strategizing for war. At this point, they have sent out two men on an undercover mission of espionage and secrecy to the great walled city of Jericho. Yeah, Jericho, the well-watered city with palm trees. Jericho, the city of fertile, lush, green valleys. Jericho, the city of abundant crops and delicious fruit. Jericho, the land flowing with milk and honey. The strong wall and fortified city with mud walls about 20 feet high that control the entrance to the interior of Canaan land. So, furthermore, archaeological discoveries inform us that the walls of Jericho were wide enough to have four chariots on top. And believe it or not, but some houses were also built on these walls. And in one such house is where our bad girl, Rahab, lived. Well, the Israelite spies had come to Jericho. And like many merchants, businessmen, and travelers, they needed a place to stay. So they sought lodging at Rahab's house. Uh huh. The house, the hotel, or the inn on the wall. And perhaps they went there to keep from looking so suspicious. But the question is, had they succeeded in avoiding suspicion? I don't think so. Because the scripture tells us that word got back to the king. So the Israelite spies had aroused suspicions among some of the people of Jericho. And of course, the word got back to the king. So he then immediately sent the royal police to Rahab's house, demanding that the spies be turned over to the police. Uh-oh, here it is, pastor. At that very moment, Rahab was confronted with having to make a split 
second decision. Now we know from verse 6 of the text uh, what decision Rahab made. She knowingly, deliberately, and intentionally hid them on the roof of her house. Beloved, now that we're at the crux of the matter, think about it for a moment. What on earth convinced and persuaded Rahab that it would be in her best interest to hide the Israelite spies, thus betraying her own people and risking her own life to save the lives of two foreigners whom she had never seen before and had no proof that she would ever see them again. What in the world caused this sister to make such a decision in that split second moment? Well, I'm glad you asked, St. Timothy, for you see, whether we know it or not, uh, Rahab's decision, like many of the split second decisions that we make, came out of her character, her values, her beliefs about herself, about family, about her world, and finally, what she believed about God himself. And all of this gave her the courage, faith, and strength to go against the people and the government of Jericho when she was confronted with making a split second decision. Come and go with me, beloved, to the rooftop of Rahab's house, the house on the Jericho wall. And as we revisit and listen in on that rooftop conversation between the prostitute and the spies, I believe we shall come to understand a few nuggets for our learning today. Well, the first nugget, and you can put this on the screen, Greg. The first nugget is the faith of Rahab. Come on and talk to me. Say the faith of Rahab. All right, here we go. Beloved, as the conversation opens, Rahab right away informs the Israelite spies of her knowledge of the God of Israel. She lets them know right away that her faith is a step, not just a statement. For her action steps of faith, welcoming them, lodging them, hiding them, covering for them, and risking her life for them, were not based on a fleshly hope of getting their money or business for the night. Her faith was not based on the fact that they were foreign men and uh, she wanted to experience uh, something new. Neither were her actions based on the size of their chest, the squareness of their chins, or the beauty of their physical appearance. But rather the faith actions of this prostitute were based on the fact that she had by faith placed her life and her future in the hands of the God of Israel. And beloved, why did she do this and from where did she get this faith? Well, we know that faith comes by what? Hearing and hearing by what? The word of God. Rahab said, fellas, listen, I know how thick the Jericho walls are. I live here. I know how mean the soldiers are. I live here. I know how strong the Jericho's armies are. I live here. But listen up, fellas, she says, but I also know that God has given this land to you. We have heard, there it is, how the Lord dried up the waters of the Red Sea. And we heard of it. When we heard of it, our hearts melted. For the Lord your God is God in heaven above and in earth beneath. And beloved, I submit to you that this is the only way that we can stand strong in the face of the enemy. Stand strong in the face of persecution. Stand strong in the face of opposition, sickness and disease, financial reversal, divorce, broken marriage, losing one's job. Uh-huh. And strong when it looks like truth is almost gone and wrong is on the throne. For in such times we wonder, is our God in charge? Is he omnipotent, all-powerful? Is he omniscient, all-knowing? Is he omnipresent, present everywhere? I've come to tell you here in Gary, Indiana, yes, 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 he is. Amen, somebody. Even Rahab the prostitute teaches us that the Lord our God is God. In heaven above and in earth beneath. No matter what it looks like, he's still God. He's God when we're up. He's God when we are down. He's God when we're almost level to the ground. He's God, baby, in the morning. He's God in the noonday. He's God in the midnight hour. Am I right about it? Well, now, after Rahab reveals her faith to the spies, she secondly reveals her focus. That's right. So here, beloved, we see that Rahab has no shame in her game. <laughs> 
her business sense kicks in. Pastor, after all, she's not a street corner prostitute who turns tricks for five or ten dollars, but bad girl Rahab, who lives in the red light district, is a high class prostitute with a house on the wall with good business sense. She clearly understands I give you something, something, you give me something, something. Hello, somebody. That's right. So in our text today, the something, something that she wants is not silver and gold. The something, something that she wants is not jewelry or clothes. The something, something that she wants is far greater. What does Rahab want? Rahab wants her family to be spared. She wants her family to be delivered. She wants her family to be saved. Hello, somebody. Yes, she was a bad girl prostitute. And who would have thought that when the heat was really on, that Rahab, the bad girl prostitute, would have enough sense, enough faith, enough focus to be concerned about the salvation of her family. Woo! I tell you, beloved, God can use some unlikely candidates to save his people. Just imagine how Rahab's family must have felt about her. When we talked to them, they probably said, yeah, that's my niece, but she ain't about nothing. Yeah, that's my cousin, but I don't claim her. Yeah, that's my sister, but don't tell nobody. <laughs> but despite the possible negative outlooks from the family, Rahab still loved her family. Who knows why she lived the way she lived? Who knows why she entertained the way she entertained? Who knows why she dressed the way she dressed? Who knows why she chose the profession that she chose? Oh, but St. Timothy, one thing is for sure. When it really counted, Rahab had faith. And she had focus. And her focus was not on how much money she could make. But rather, her focus was on her family. Am I right about it? Church, I wonder, where is our faith? And where is our focus during this time of gender confusion? And worldwide pandemic is in these very last of the last days before Jesus returns. Is our faith rooted in the God of heaven? And earth is our faith focused on our family. Is it our focus and desire that our families be saved? Is it our focus and desire that our spouses be saved? That our children be saved? That our uncles and aunts and nieces and nephews, brothers and sisters be saved? If so, what are we doing, St. Timothy and friends? What are we doing to help get them saved? Are we praying earnestly for our families? Are we focused on our families? Are we valuing our families? Are we making time for our families? Are we reaching out to our families? Are we prioritizing our families? Are we affirming, embracing, hugging, encouraging, protecting, and providing for our families? Are we loving and supporting our families with our time, our money, our active and involved presence? Are we focused on our families? Well, now, after she had shared her focus for the salvation of her family, the Israelites responded, our lives for yours. But they agreed on two conditions. She must not tell their mission to the king. And she must buy and tie a red scarlet cord in the window as a sign when they return to overtake the city. And only those, watch this, only those, pastor, in the house at the time of the conquest and destruction would be saved. Everyone else would be destroyed. Touch your neighbor. You ain't got to touch me. Just look at me and say, I'm saved and I'm in the house. Church, they struck a deal and agreed on all of the conditions. Rahab then let them down over the wall by a heavy rope and told them, St. Timothy, to hide in the mountains for three days until the search party had returned to Jericho empty-handed. She then in faithful obedience tied that red cord in the window. Right here, beloved, we pick up the third nugget from this conversation, and we see that because of her faith, her focus, and her obedience, Rahab had been given favor. 
That's right, beloved. We see the favor of Rahab. Somebody shout favor. Yes, Rahab now knows that she's been given favor by God. But the good news, pastor, is if she's going to share it with somebody else. Now, at this point, St. Timothy, Rahab the prostitute had to become, watch this, Rahab the bad girl evangelist. <laughs> That's right. She, like Noah, had to go and preach to her family and friends uh -huh, about the destruction to come. And if you want to be saved, Rahab said, you need to come to my house uh, on the wall that's been covered by the sign of the blood. Some of her relatives, Pastor Jackson, probably said, Rahab, girl, you must be out your mind. We know you, and you can't be serious. Rahab, girl, I'll die before I step foot in your house, that old nasty, stinking place. Girlfriend or Miss Thing, you got to be out your mind. You want me to come to your house? Rahab, I wouldn't be called dead in your house. Whoop. But be that as it may, Rahab kept preaching and got as many uh -huh, of the family as she could to gather in her house before that great day of destruction appeared. Beloved, that's why we must preach, hallelujah, when we feel like it. Preach when we don't feel like it. Preach when they want to hear it and preach when they don't want to hear it. Preach it loud, brother. Preach it strong, sister. Preach it hard until they stop doing wrong. That's right. If they talk about you, pastor, preach. If they don't encourage you, preach. If they laugh at you, preach. If they drag your name through the mud, preach. Brother, preach. Well, now, pray have waited. Joshua chapter 3 and 4 and 5 reveals to us a huge nation of people crossing a raging river and setting up camp not far from Jericho. But in Joshua 6, 1, our story picks up. Joshua is given some strange battle plans for conquering Jericho. But out of obedience, Joshua did as instructed. He organized the people in somewhat of a parade. The armed men led the procession. The seven priests followed blowing trumpets. The Ark of the Covenant followed the priests. And the remaining people completed the procession. They marched silently once a day for six days around Jericho while the priests blew the trumpets. On the seventh day, they marched around Jericho seven times. And on the seventh time, they blew the trumpets and shouted. And the shout was so strong, it shook the ground and the walls fell down. Hello, somebody. Well, at that point, the armies of Israel went in to kill and destroy the people of the city. However, Pastor Jackson, amazingly, the walls fell down everywhere except for Rahab's house. <laughs> the house on the wall. Covered by the red cord, the sign of blood. Here we see the favor of God for Rahab's house and her family. Am I right about it? In Joshua 6, 23, we read, So the young men who had done the spying went in and brought out. Watch this. They went in and brought out Rahab, her father, mother, brothers, and all that belonged to her. They brought out her entire family and put them in a place outside the camp of Israel. St. Timothy, I submit to you that there's nothing like walking in the favor of God. Baby, favor gets you in when man locks you out. <laughs> favor opens doors when man shuts the door in your face. <laughs> favor gets the loan when our credit says, no way, Jose. <laughs> favor puts money in your hands when you know you have not done the work. <laughs> favor creates opportunities when none can be found. Favor, favor gets you promoted when others get passed over. Favor keeps us safe and protected when we could have been killed and exploited. Favor hides us so the enemy can't find us. Favor saves us when life could have destroyed us. Anybody glad you got favor in your life today? Favor, favor, favor. Look at your neighbor and say, 
I'm glad I've got favor. It's all the labor. Love it. We're all coming on in now. We've seen the faith of Rahab, the focus of Rahab, the favor of Rahab that saved her and her family. But finally, we shall see the fourth nugget resulting from that split second decision and conversation on the rooftop. And that is the future of Rahab. That's right, Pastor. The future of Rahab. You see, beloved, Joshua 625, we find that there is more to the story. The writer tells us that Rahab lived among the Israelites to the day that the book of Joshua was written. She dropped her business of prostitution. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. And became a part of Israel's community of faith. The fact that she had been a bad girl, prostitute, was no longer relevant. By faith, she was joined to the people of God. And this connection gave her a hope, a future, and a place. Uh-huh. In James 2.24 and Hebrews 11, Hall of Faith. Beloved, isn't it amazing? The people that God will choose to deliver and save his people. Do you know what? When God chooses, it sometimes, Pastor, causes me to wonder if he does background checks. <laughs> if he does credit report analysis. If he does criminal investigations. Obviously not. Because some of the people whom God has chosen to use in his salvation drama have been some rather shady characters. What do you mean, Pastor Murphy? Can I call the roll for a minute? He chose Noah, who messed around and got drunk on the day of reconstruction. He chose Abraham, who lied to save his own neck. He chose Jacob, and he turned out to be a slickster, a trickster, a wheeler, and a dealer. He chose Moses, and he murdered that man, hit him in the sand, and he also had a serious anger problem. He chose Saul, and he was disobedient, jealous, and insecure. He chose David. He was an adulterer, liar, thief, and a murderer. He chose Solomon. He was a wise fool, whoremongering with 700 wives and 300 concubines. And that's all he could handle. <laughs> he chose Peter. And you know, Peter would cuss and fight. <laughs> he chose Paul. And he was a murderer and terrible persecutor of the Christians. And what we learn from all of this is that God, chooses, not because of, but rather in spite of ourselves, in spite of our past, in spite of our mistakes, in spite of our blunders, in spite of our tainted reputations, in spite of our wrongdoing, he uses us for his glory, his honor, and his praise. <laughs> Give me about two more minutes. And it is no secret for our sister, bad girl, Rahab. The prostitute who turned out to be an evangelist for the Lord. This bad girl, Rahab, reminds us that being joined to the family of God has nothing to do with our goodness. But it has everything to do with God's grace and mercy. Can I get an amen from anybody? <laughs> Through a prostitute, God teaches us that we are saved by grace and not because of We've been so good. He chose Rahab, and she became a part of the line for the Messiah, Jesus Christ himself. Let me give it to you. I know you don't believe it, but it's true. Rahab married Salmon, the father of Boaz. Boaz married Ruth, and they had a son named Obed. Obed begat Jesse, and Jesse begat David. And through the line of David came the Messiah. Come on, somebody. Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, the Son of the living God, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, pawn of the very Virgin Mary, turned water into wine, gave sight to the blind, made the lame walk and the dumb talk, fed 5,000, agonized in the garden, beaten on the Pontius Pilate, suffered, bled, and died, buried in a bravo tomb. But the good news early Sunday morning, hallelujah, 
tell somebody, he got up and he's our soon coming king. Christ, our joy today, our hope for tomorrow, our Lord and Savior. Is there anybody here? who's glad to be in the family of God. I don't care what you've done. I don't care where you've been. I don't care what happened in your past. But if God has saved you, if he's given you a place in his kingdom, you ought to stand on your feet, clap your hands, and give God glory in this place because he's been mighty, 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 mighty good to all of us. Somebody shout glory. 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 Should I pray, Pastor? I'll give it to you. Come on and stand, everybody. We want to pray and get you out of here. It's been a fruitful and wonderful service. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I know I'm not at uh, Mount Gilead, <laughs> but if you would uh, just give me a minute here, bow your heads. All right, this is the way we do it there. If there's anybody here today who says, uh, Pastor Murphy, this is not the first time I've heard the word, but God has been dealing with me, and I really do want to be saved. I want the Lord to forgive me of all my sin. I want him to come into my life and be my Lord and Savior. I want him to write my name down in the Lamb's Book of Life. So when this fragile life is over, Without a doubt, heaven will be my eternal home. Category number two, pastor, I know who God is, but truth be known, I'm a backslider. I've drifted away from God. I have not been faithful in church, and I've not been using my gifts and my talents that he gave me for him. I've been doing me. I've been getting turned up, doing this, that, and the other, but I'm tired. I'm like the prodigal son, the prodigal daughter. I've been wasting my life, wasting my time, wasting my gifts, wasting my energy. God, I'm tired. I want to come back home. I want to be restored. I want to get back into right relationship with you, God. If it's the last thing I do, you spend my life. Over 700 people have died of COVID-19. And you spared my life. I'm still here. Thank you for waking me up. I want to serve you for the balance of my days and give you all that I've got because you've been just that good to me. That's category two. Category three, pastor, I'm a Christian, but I want to join church. I'd like to become a member, an active supporting member, a growing member of St. Timothy. Amen, somebody. And then category number four, pastor, I'm a Christian too, but I need to get baptized. I want to let the world know there's no shame in my game and all in my walk with Jesus Christ. I want to commit and let the world know I belong to him. I'm his and he's mine. Those of you who find yourself in one of those four categories, sinner needing to be saved, backslider needing to be restored, Christian needing to join church, Christian needing to get baptized. You're in one of those categories, just lift your hands. Whoever you are, wherever you are. Just lift that hand. We've got people who will minister to you to help you get just what you need from God. Whosoever will, the Bible says, let him come. Let her come. Amen. I don't see any hands. To God be the glory. Let's pray. Father, in the precious name of your son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, God, we thank you so much for this rich service of celebration of family and friends. We thank you for all the visitors who've come today. And we pray, God, that something has been said, that an eternal seed has been planted in the hearts of your people. Water it, Father. Nurture it and cause it to mushroom and bring forth much fruit to your glory, honor, and praise. Continue to bless St. Timothy, both pastor and people, and all ministry leaders in the name of Jesus. Continue to smile on St. Timothy. Pour out your favor. Pour out your blessing. Pour out your presence upon St. Timothy. Do a mighty work in this place for your glory. Be magnified. Be glorified. Be honored, God, and be lifted up in the name of Jesus. Strengthen them where they're weak. Build them up, God, when they feel a bit worn down. And have your way in this place. 
in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the food that's been prepared. We ask God that you will bless it, that it might be fit and nourishing for our consumption. And bless the servants who labor to prepare it. We thank you for them. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Now unto you, Father. You're the only one who's able to keep us from falling, from stumbling, from giving up, giving out, giving in. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion, rulership, authority, and all power, both right now and forevermore. And everybody who loves the Lord and you're grateful to be a child of God, you opened your mouth and said, Amen. 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 Come on and clap your hands and give him glory, St. Timothy. Hallelujah. We want to thank, we want to thank Pastor Dr. Murphy for his ministry today. Amen. And just some quick instructions as we leave. Um, the, uh, we have prepared um, food for uh, each and every person. It's a take and go, so don't take and stay. I love you all. We want to take and go. And, um, and certainly all that were visiting with us this morning, we are certainly grateful for your visitation. And we pray that something was said and done that will encourage you the remaining of the week or until we meet again. As we leave, let's follow the directions of the ushers, those parents who have children uh, who are in children's church. You can go back in the multi-purpose room and your child will be there uh, waiting patiently for you. Amen. Let us now uh, recess out. The choir is going to give us an uh, upbeat selection and we're going to greet you as you pass through the north end. Thank you.